Well, the reason I left uh, athletics in the first place was because of the political implications of the 1980 boycott. And the one thing that I took for granted was the freedom to run for the joy of the sport. And I never ever thought that uh, politics would play into what I was doing. And so it just became very disheartening for me to have four years of training taken away because our government didn't like what another country was doing. Um, and not only that, but most importantly, at now I was in my, I had just graduated from the University of Maryland. So in America, when you graduate, you go out and get a job. And so if there was any opportunity for successes as a result of the Olympics, gold medal, what have you, that was now taken away from me, you know, to get opportunities, to, uh, financial opportunities. So uh, American football at that time basically saved my athletic career. Um, I didn't do it because I wanted to. I did it out of necessity. Uh, athletics was still an amateur sport, so there still wasn't any money. I mean, yeah, if you want a gold medal, there's an opportunity to get some endorsements and all that, but you had to get to the Olympic Games first in order to, to have that happen. So that was taken away from me. So I was facing basically um, four years with no income, no foreseeable income, because it was an amateur sport. And I was just fortunate to be talented enough that I had an opportunity to play American football and I landed with the San Francisco 49ers. So I always tell everybody that they saved my athletic career as I knew it at that point. I was a 22-year-old college graduate without a job. And so I got to play America's sport, professional football, and make a sizable, handsome income, which not too many people would have argued at that point. Running for zero, making you know hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, playing American football. So um, I, di I did it mainly for economic and occupational reasons, not because I didn't like athletics. I loved athletics, but the one thing I was in athletics for was an opportunity to rep represent my country in the Olympic Games. And then that was taken away from me and I didn't really want to risk training um, and exposing myself to a retaliatory boycott, which indeed happened. We hosted the 90, 1984 Olympic Games, and those countries that we boycotted boycotted us. So once again, I was still subjected to political interference in, our, in the purity of a, of a sport that I love so well. And there's a bit of history there. I did some things that were uh, groundbreaking. Um, back in America, they named a rule, the Nehemiah Rule, where amateurs could uh, uh, play professionally as a result of, of my, my lawsuit because I, I proved that I, it wasn't making me a better amateur athlete. So many athletes that came after me was a, were able to be amateurs in one sense and professional in the other because of me. So there was a Nehemiah Rule. Um, and then most importantly, um, I did the right thing, you know. It wasn't that I was opposing the IAAF, I was just calling into question the interpretation of a ruling. And, um, and, and because I love the sport so much, I would not have fought them for four and a half years if I didn't love the sport. I mean, it could have, I could have easily stayed in American football, could have easily stayed in American football, you know. And, and made handsome money. But my first and only love was athletics. And during the course I was playing American football, when they did change the rules and they became a professional entity, quite frankly, I wanted to be a professional uh, track and field athlete doing what I truly loved to the core. And it was less violent and, and more healthy. Um, so, but I just think the timing of it all, no one had ever done that. And in our country, when you grow up, you're taught to play a lot of sports. You know, um, but we find out as you get better and better, they want to pigeonhole you into doing one thing. It's envy and it's jealousy. You know, you can't be good at everything. You need to just be good at one thing. And my family raised me to be expressive. And if you love it, do it. And so I'm just fortunate that I was able to. Um, I don't look at what I did and the taking away of the four and a half years of my athletics career and in, in athletics as a negative. It was a positive and um, still to this day I've never been defined by an Olympic gold medal or not. Most people still introduce me as an Olympic uh, gold medalist and I've never walked into an Olympic stadium as an Olympian ever. I'm an Olympian but we boycotted. 
So I've never represented the United States in Olympic Games. And still to this day, I have to correct everyone who introduces me when I'm speaking or doing clinics. Because I think, well, you won everything and you were doing everything. And you're the first man to do this. You clearly had to be a, a gold medalist. And I go, no. So that's a testament to that one race does not define who you are. And it's your body of work and it's not that one day of work.